Mastering Python Part 6. It's a part of the series having 100 plus solved exercises to accelerate the learning. In the part 6, we'll discuss about the matrices. In Python, matrices can be represented using a nested list or using a specialized library, which is known as NumPy. So using a nested list, you can create a matrix as a list of elements where each inner list represents a row of the matrix. Here is an example of 3 cross 3 matrix using this nested list. So in this example, matrix will represent a 3 cross 3 matrix where the first row is 1, 2, 3, second row is 4, 5, 6 and the third row is 7, 8, 9. So you can access the individual elements using this matrix 0, 0. That will show you the element in the first row and the first column, which is 1. The second thing we will discuss is the tuples, which is an ordered immutable collection of elements, which is enclosed in braces or without an enclosing brackets. So the tuples are similar to the list, but they cannot be modified once they are created. And they, in this, each element is separated by a comma. Example, this tuple, my tuple, which has the three elements, 1, 2, and 3. The first program in this list is uh, to create a program that fills a 3 cross 3 matrix with the values entered by the user and display the sum of the main diagonal variables. So here the program will first initialize a 3 cross 3 matrix with all the elements initially set to 0 and then prompt the user to enter the value for the matrix. Using a nested for loop, the program iterates over each position of the matrix and prompt the user to enter the corresponding value. And these values which are entered by the user are then assigned to their respective positions in this matrix. After filling all this matrix, the program will calculate the sum of this main diagonal values here. So here, first initialize the variable sum diagonal to 0 and then use a single for loop to iterate over the main diagonal elements. Main diagonal elements are the positions where the row index equals the column index and then add each element to the sum diagonal variable and finally display the results. The next program is to fill a 4 cross 4 matrix with a random value and display the transpose matrix. So here first import the random module to generate random values for the matrix and then initialize a 4 cross 4 matrix with all elements set to 0. Using a nested for loop the program iterates over each position of the matrix and assign a random variable generated using random dot rand int 1 to 100. Like this. So after filling the matrix, the program displays the original matrix by treating over each row and printing it. The program then initializes a 4 cross 4 matrix that is a transpose matrix here. And with all the elements initially set to 0 and store the transpose matrix. So using a nested for loop, the program will iterate over each position of this original matrix and assign the corresponding elements to the transpose matrix by swapping the rows and column indices and finally it will display this transpose matrix here. The next program is to read 2 cross 2 matrix and display the sum of 2 matrix. So here first initialize the 2 cross 2 matrix, matrix 1, matrix 2 and the sum matrix to store the input matrix and their sum respectively. And then program will prompt the user to enter the elements of first matrix and then enter the elements of second matrix. And similarly the program will prompt the user to enter the elements of second matrix using nested for loop and then using nested for loop the program will calculate the sum of two matrix by adding the corresponding elements from this uh, first and the two uh, matrix and then store the results in the sum matrix and finally we'll display the results here. The next program is to fill a 5 cross 5 matrix with integers and display the largest value. So here first initialize a 5 cross 5 matrix name matrix with all elements initially set to 0. So here uh, we are using this uh, 0 into 5. That is it is creating a list with the 5 zeros. Then 4 uh, in the range 5. So uh, this means that a loop will run 5 times representing the number of rows. Then 0 in the star 5, 4 in range 5. Right? So, which will uh, create a 2D list where each row is a copy of this list with four, uh, 5 zeros. So, a variable max value is initialized to the value of this position 0, 0. And the tuple name maximum position is initialized with the coordinate 0, 0. 
so using a nested for loop the program will iterate through each element of this matrix so if this element is found greater than this current max value it updates the max value to the new maximum value and updates the maximum position to the position of that element and finally the program displays the largest value in the matrix and its position by accessing the maximum value and the maximum position and uh, then finally it displays the largest value and then position is displayed by adding the one to the row and the column indices to count for the zero based indexing the next program is to read a three cross three matrix and calculate the average of the values present in the even position so here we will first initialize an empty matrix so using this so we will use a nested loop to read the values of this three cross three matrix from the user and store them in a matrix variable so here in the outer loop for in the range 3 here that is we create a new empty list called row for each row in the matrix so in this uh, inner loop for uh, dash in the range 3 we prompt the user to enter a value and convert it to the integer using this int input enter a value we then append the value to the row list and after each row is filled we append the row list to the matrix list effectively adding the rows to the matrix so next we will initialize the two variables that is the sum even to store the sum of the values at even position and the count even to keep track of the number of values at even position and we iterate over each element of the matrix using two nested loops one for the row and one for the column so inside this loop we check if the value of the row index i and column index j is even using this expression i plus j divided by 2 equal to equal to 0 if that sum is even it means the element is at the even position in the matrix we add the corresponding value matrix i j to that sum even variable and increment the sum even variable here finally we calculate the average of the values at even position by dividing the sum even by count even and then finally display the results the next program is to fill the four cross four matrix with the random numbers and display the sum of values present in each row and in each column so here we will start by importing the random module here to generate the random numbers and then we will calculate or we are creating a four cross four matrix which is filled with the random numbers using a nested list comprehension so here each element in the matrix is generated using random dot rand int 1 to 10 which generates a random integer between 1 and 10 then we initialize two list row sum and column sum with zeros to store the sum of values in each row and column respectively and then we use nested loops to iterate over uh, each element of the matrix so inside this loop we update the sum of ith row by adding the value matrix ij to row sum i and update the sum of jth column by adding the same value to column sum j and then after calculating the sums we display the sum of values in each row using a loop and print function similarly we display the sum of values in each column using a loop and then print function here the next program is to read a three cross three ma uh, matrix and calculate the determinant of that matrix so here we are showing the two solutions in the first program we first read the elements of this three cross three matrix from the user store them in a matrix list then use a determinant formula to calculate the determinant value and store it in a det variable finally display the results second we are using a saras rule to calculate the determinant so here we first read the element of 3 cross 3 elements from the user store them in a matrix and then calculate the determinant using saras rule which involves multiplying certain elements of matrix and adding and subtracting them based on their positions finally display the calculated determinant the next program is to read two matrices return the multiplication between them as an answer and the program should observe whether or not it's possible to perform the multiplication so here it's a one program so half program is given here and half is here so we'll start by reading the dimension of two matrix row a and row uh, column a for matrix a and row b and column b for matrix b here next we check if this matrix multiplication is possible by comparing the number of columns of matrix a with the number of rows of matrix b 
If these values are not equal, it means the matrix cannot be multiplied. So we display a message indicating that matrix multiplication is not possible. So if the matrix multiplication is possible, we proceed to read the elements of matrix A here. So we use a nested loops to iterate over each row and column of matrix A and prompt the user to enter the corresponding element. And we store these elements in the matrix A list. Next, we read the elements of matrix B using nested loops and store the results in matrix B here. Now we have both the matrices. We create a result matrix to store the results of the multiplication. So we will initialize as a matrix of zeros with the dimensions row A into column B here. To perform the matrix multiplication, we use three nested loops. The counter loop iterates over the rows of matrix A. The middle loop iterates over the columns of matrix B and this inner loop iterates over the columns of matrix A or the rows of matrix B which allows us to multiply the corresponding elements and accumulate the sum in the corresponding position of result matrix. And finally, we will display the results of matrix multiplication by iterating over each row of this result matrix and printing the elements which gives us a final matrix that represents the multiplication of matrix A and B. The next program in this is to read a 4 cross 4 matrix and check if it's a diagonal matrix. That is if all the elements outside the main diagonals are equal to 0. So here we will start by creating an empty list matrix to store the elements of matrix then use a nested loop. Here we will iterate over each row and column of the matrix and prompt the user to enter the corresponding elements. Then we initialize a boolean variable is diagonal as true to assume that the matrix is a diagonal matrix and this variable will be used to track if any element outside the main diagonal is non-zero. So to check if it's a diagonal matrix we iterate over each element of this matrix and uh, then for each element at this position ij if i is not equals to j indicating an element outside the main diagonal and the element is non-zero we set is diagonal to false and break out of the loop. And finally, we will display the results by checking the value of is, di is diagonal. So if it is true, we print that matrix is a diagonal matrix. Otherwise, we say it's not a diagonal matrix. And next program in this is to read a M cross N matrix indicating that the location there are mines in a minesweeper game being zero for the neutral wheel and one for the location where there would be mines. And the program should return a matrix indicating the positions, the number of mines in neighboring houses. So here we will start by prompting the user to enter the dimensions of matrix M and N. M is the number of rows and is the number of columns here. Then using a nested loop, we trade over each row and column. We prompt the user to enter the elements of each position in this mine uh, field matrix. Next, we initialize this neighboring uh, mines for each position. We calculate the sum, we calculate the number of neighboring mines. For each position this mine field matrix we trade over each row and column of this mine field matrix using this nested loop for each position ij in this mine field matrix we check the eight neighboring positions by using a nested loop with offsets dx and dy ranging from minus one to one we calculate the indices of this neighboring position new i and new j by adding the offsets to the current position indices and inside this innermost loop we check if that neighboring position is within this bound of the matrix. If it is within the bound we increment the neighboring mines count and if there is a mine is equals to 1 here. And finally we will display the neighboring mine matrix which represents the number of neighboring mines for each position in this field. Okay, thank you.